Um, so uh, who am I? I guess I don't have to do this slide as much since I got an intro. I guess I wasn't counting on doing an intro when I put these slides together. But uh, I've been doing PHP since uh, 1999. PHP 3 is when I got started. Um, I program. I'm kind of a polyglot. I do PHP, Ruby, and JavaScript, as well as mobile apps for iPhone and Android. And uh, in a project I'm working on, I'm also getting to do some Python, so I'm kind of getting into that as well. Um, Co-founded a company called Brightbit. Um, heard about it in the intro. So before I go into Bullet or the uh, specifics of Bullet or what it is, I kind of wanted to do a little bit of history and uh, a little bit of the philosophy behind Bullet to give you an idea of uh, how I arrived at the idea for Bullet or how I thought Bullet was a good idea. That kind of stuff. So it's not going to be too boring. Um, uh, we're going to start with MVC frameworks. I have a pretty long history of creating MVC frameworks. Most of them were never public. So it's, it's that kind of thing where you're not a PHP developer until you've created your own framework like two and a half times or something. Um, I've definitely been there. So they pretty much they pretty much all suck, though. Um, I, this as I was learning. It's just a, you know, framework is kind of a rite of passage learning process, right? So um, I did make one framework that um, didn't suck. It was called Alloy. Uh, I released it in February 2011. And to give you an idea, uh, Symphony 2 was released in mid-2011. I think it was June or July-ish. And uh, Zen Framework 2 was released at the end of 2012. And one of the things, I tried to do something uh, different with Alloy. I was always looking for something something a little bit different, something a little bit unique. Uh, so one of the things I did with Alloy that at the time MVC frameworks weren't doing uh, was instead of having a global like controllers, models, views directory, I had a, I had a modules directory and everything in the, mod and the modules directory. And um, the framework's kind of dead now, so uh, the website doesn't even go anywhere because I don't maintain it anymore. But uh, it was kind of validating to see uh, Symphony go the bundle route, and then Zen Framework 2 go the module route, and the whole idea of drag and dropping a single folder in your MVC stack was really nice, kind of self-contained stuff. So uh, I've been, so the, the Wi-Fi is like popping up on my screen here. So the, uh, there we go. So I've kind of been around the block with MVC frameworks. Um, I became a bit disillusioned with MVC though, in general, because uh, I don't think MVC is necessarily a good fit for uh, HTTP, it's specifically when you're dealing with like REST APIs. You're dealing with request, response, um, and MVC can be, uh, it comes with its own restrictions, and uh, it can be a little bit of a, a little bit of burden. So I always, I say this kind of a lot, uh, the same thing, only different. And I've <laughs> I say this about a lot of different things. And if I asked anyone like what MVC framework they use or what framework they use, period, you might say I use, um, you know, you might say I use CodeIgniter because it's lightweight or I use um, Kohana because it's fast or I use uh, Laravel because I'm an artisan or I use uh, Z framework too because it's modular, right? You know, so there's there's all these different things, there's all these different marketing terms that frameworks kind of use, but in the end, it's really another MVC framework. It's got a controller that you put all most of your logic in. Uh, well, hopefully not. I mean, hopefully you put most of your logic in models and stuff. But uh, you put, you know, you get stuff from the database, shove into some template and render it. So they're all kind of the same thing, only different, just depending on what style you want to go with, how heavyweight you like it, lightweight you like it. You guys may have uh, read this in the Bible here. Um, so uh, what I want you, and this may not be an exact quote, <laughs> uh, by the way. Um, I want you to consider what, uh, what other uh, patterns may suit. Just kind of have an open mind, really. Uh, beyond MVC a little bit, um, if there's any other way that we can solve the HTTP problem a little bit better, than has been done, 
this is a, a quote from uh, Fabian Potencier. He developed the Symphony 2 framework. This was in 2011, back when Symphony 2 was first released. This is a couple months after Symphony 2 was released. Uh, he was getting a lot of questions about is Symphony an MBC framework? Um, and this was really his response. That his response was, was this long, this long blog article here, but um, this is kind of the, the heart of it right here. He says, he basically, before this, he basically says, I don't care if it's an MVC framework or not. Like, that's not, the, that's not the, the goal, right? The goal is not to create an MVC framework. The goal is to create a PHP framework that gives you an HTTP response when you receive an HTTP request. So he says, I don't like MVC because that's not how the web works. And he really nails it right here. He says, Symphony 2 is an HTTP framework. So he's, uh, he's kind of ahead of the curve in that kind of thinking. He's not out to build an, H an MVC framework. He's out to kind of solve the HTTP request response. So he's kind of on that page already, which I really like. And that's, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, so the history of MVC coming up until then, I think, was the first time anyone ever really said that. Like, no, I'm not building MVC. I don't really care about MVC. Um, he said in that article also that he really only cares about separation of concerns. Like, that's, that's the most important thing. You need separation of concerns so you're not, like, creating spaghetti code. If you have that, you're pretty much, pretty much good. So this is the philosophy of Bullet and my kind of overall philosophy in general. I want to do more with less. And I put code in parentheses, but really this applies to everything. So I want to create, you know, you want to do more with less time. You want to do more with less money. You want to do more with less code. You want to do, you want to write less code and get it to do more for you. Um, cognitive overhead is a term I use a lot also. Uh, when I'm, especially in regards to like frameworks or systems for building apps, the goal should be to have a low cognitive overhead. And what I mean by that is uh, there's a low amount of things, other things like extra PHP things that you have to learn to use the framework. So you shouldn't have to, like I hate steep learning curves. Uh, so I'm kind of biased against like large MVC frameworks from uh, from the get-go, really don't like having that much code when it's not necessary. So the low cognitive overhead is basically here, down here, said in a in a different way, right? You leverage raw PHP without introducing too many framework like knowledge. Without so you shouldn't have to have framework knowledge to use the framework. You should have to have PHP knowledge, and it should just leverage the way PHP works, and that would be that would be ideal. That way you wouldn't have to fight the framework to get it to do what you want to do. You could just do it. Um, I also have embraced HTTP here, which I skipped over. But um, this is really one of the keys to Bullet. So one of the selling points in Bullet is that it conforms to the HTTP spec more so than any other framework, and more, certainly more so than any other micro framework. And the last thing really is that micro doesn't have to mean no structure. When a lot of people think of a micro framework, they think of um, you know all the routes in the index.php file, and it's just like blah, like this mess that's just regurgitated out in the code, and everything's all you know flat route after route, and um, there's no really structure or organization to it. So it doesn't have to be that way. Um, <laughs> I put this together uh, kind of last minute, but. Um, this, is, this is an example of what I mean by low cognitive overhead. So this would be kind of, a, kind of the opposite example. Does anybody know what framework this is from, by the way? Yeah. Zen Framework 2, that's right. Probably the most complicated PHP framework in existence. Um, <laughs> I kind of feel like this is what happened. Um, and like I said, I am biased against you know, large stuff. I don't like executing lots of code if I don't have to. <laughs> um, this is kind of life as, <laughs> as a software developer, right? You try to create this perfect system instead of this system that is 
simple, efficient, and one that works, and you end up with this mess, and you don't know how to get out of it. And, you, and it's super complicated, and there's all kinds of things you have to learn, so much knowledge that you have to add on top of PHP to be able to use it. Um, so enough of that. So what is bullet, finally? Like, tell me what bullet is. Like 10 minutes in or 15 minutes in or whatever, and still haven't told me. So bullet is a, it is a micro framework. And here are the main concepts. Um, basically what micro framework means is it really only handles URL routing, uh, request, and response. Um, there's a template. There's a little simple like PHP template class in bullet. You don't have to use it. That's only if you return an HTML template. Um, but that's it. That's all it gives you. So another main concept is that we build around HTTP and defined URIs or URLs, whatever your flavor, uh, universal in, uh, resource indicator or locator. They're kind of inter they're not strictly interchangeable. They've kind of become interchangeable. So. Uh, but it parses one segment at a time. And this is where it kind of differs from other micro frameworks. And I'll show you the code, code in a little bit. Um, but this is really probably one of the main differences here. And then it has a declarative functional style nested routing. Uh, so how many of you look, have you looked at it already? Like on the website? Or the, OK. So you have maybe some idea. Um, it leverages closures for structure and scope. Um, so the problem, one of the problems with micro frameworks is they don't necessarily have structure because they're typically route plus callback, whatever that is. And there's not, you, you don't have that controller, that, that safety net of, oh, this is some nice structure, you know, and some nice scope here. You just get the flat callback. Less repetitive code, cleaner routes. Um, these are kind of the parsing rules. So one path at a, at a segment at a time and only closures can be used. So um, bullet is a little bit opinionated in the, in the routing. A lot of micro frameworks will allow you, I think uh, Slim allows you to, I know Silex allows you to use a controller structure for routing inside the micro framework. So you can like mount a route on a controller and then it'll uh, do, you know, call different methods on that controller or on that whatever object you give it based on some predefined rules, uh, bullet doesn't have that. So you can't, it doesn't take just any like callable on the route. It has, it is a closure, it has to be a closure and there's a reason for that. Um, the response must be explicitly returned from the function. So there's no like rendering or echoing out of the, out of the, uh, the, the handler, the route handler. Uh, I hate that. So uh, return, explicit return, you call a function put it, you get inputs, you expect outputs, right? Something should be returned. It shouldn't just be like blah or it is on the page. Um, the path must be fully consumed or error. This seems maybe like kind of obvious. Like, yeah, if the URL doesn't exist, of course there's gonna be an error. Like that's, that's obvious. Well, this really is here because of this. So only one path segment at a time. So bullet splits the URL uh, by, by slash and looks for this segment and then it looks for this segment and looks for this segment, segment next. And in a nested way. Um, and so it's possible in bullet to consume part of the path, but not all of it. So you may have like posts slash 42 slash edit or whatever. And it might get down to post slash 42, but then it might not find the edit path. So it has 404 there. Um, there are handlers for different behavior, and I'll go through each one. There's uh, path handlers, which is just a bare static path like about or posts or blog or whatever. Param handlers, which uh, take uh, parameters that might be in the URL, like a slash ID or a slash slug for a, a title. Method handlers, which uh, handle like HTTP, get, post, put, delete. Format handlers, which handle like HTML or JSON. And then the only other note here is that the method and format handlers will only run when the path has been fully consumed. And what that means, again, back to here, right? Path must be fully consumed is that if you put a get handler on a path, you only want that to run when people have requested that path, right? Because you don't, you don't want it to get, you don't want bullet to parse like post and then 42 and then it not able to find get edit, but then parse a, a get handler. So 
Um, that'll be more obvious when you see the code. So show me some code, right? Uh, come on, let's get to the meat. So this is, this is the index file. And this is, I just show this really because, uh, because of this here. So a lot of micro frameworks put, um, they, it's, I've looked at a lot built with like Slim and Silex and stuff like that. And uh, people just really don't know how to organize it. I have a, a recommended organization structure on the BulletPHP website. Um, and I have a skeleton app and a blog example app. So, uh, I, so I kind of have a way that, um, I had a suggestion for organization, but I typically do this. So uh, all my route files are separated by top level paths. So it's like slash events or slash posts or slash users or whatever it is. Uh, and I have an index route just for, you know, slash. <laughs> and, and I just require those files in here. So there's not just a bunch of crap in my index file. So, and I put those in app slash routes. And so this is kind of what it looks like. This is finally like, finally I get to see some code for real what it looks like. First thing you might notice, this is, this is nested, right? So this routing is a little bit different than you're used to for a micro framework. Why is it like this? Like a lot of people don't like, uh, don't like the level of nesting or uh, that's why a lot of people don't like Node.js. They might like, oh, you know, it's too many callbacks or whatever, too many, too much, too many nesting levels, but really, what it's doing is, since bullet only parses one part of the URL at a time, it's using a path handler to say there's a slash posts. It's using a param handler to say I expect an integer now. So post slash and then 42 or 5 or 11 or you know whatever, not, not a, like a slug. There's a, there's a different param thing for a slug, but we'll get to that later. And then all of the handlers uh, are passed in the request object. And you notice I'm using this right here. So instead of being, instead of having to use, uh, I could do like a use, you know, app like up here to uh, to use that app variable. It'd be the same thing. But if you're using PHP 5.4, uh, by the way, Bullet goes down uh, supports PHP 5.3 because uh, I built it like a year and a half ago, and uh, that's what was widely supported. But if you're using PHP 5.4, it will use PHP's bind to method on any closure you pass in, and it'll give it the current current application scope. So you, then you can use this, and you don't have to, you know, you don't end up with this dingleberry all over your routes, right? Use app, use app, use app. So uh, that's one thing nice it does. Um, so then I'm at the post integer. It the param route will pass me the param, so request and then param. And then I just use that to, to find a post. And then I might do an additional like check here, like if post is not found, return 404. Um, I, you check your you know, user ACLs or whatever. And then you can do whatever you want to with your post after that. So I start finding methods now. I can do get here. I can do post. I can do put. I can do delete. Um, anything I want. And that post is only ever loaded once, right? I don't have to load it in every single route. That's part of the reason why it's nested. So you can leverage PHP's default behavior, uh, the way that closures work, and you can just use that variable. You don't have to reload that post for the view route, for the edit route, for the delete route, for the you know, new post route, whatever. You don't have to re reload that. So that's, that's one kind of key thing. And then we have format handlers. So format JSON, I'm just gonna use post and then return post to array. Any array that is returned from a handler gets automatically JSON encoded with the JSON content type header, uh, application JSON, and then a content link. And then here I'm just going to return a template, uh, which is using bullets, built-in templates. So I'm going to do a quick code comparison. Um, this is a typical micro framework, like I was saying before. So in a typical micro framework, you start with the method, and then you define whatever long URL, right? So it's kind of like route callback, or route callable, and they'll generally accept any callable. So you can put a flat function, a closure, a you know, class, anything. Anything that's gonna let you put in there. And then uh, this example happens to be from Slim. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the whole use app thing because it doesn't do the rebinding of, of closures. And then Loading the post, I have to check if it's JSON, emit my own header. This is how most people 
like do it in Slim. You have to JSON encode. Like this goes in every single thing that you need to put out output in, unless since it's a micro framework, right? You can just define your own flat function somewhere, which is what most people do. And they call it like two JSON or something, and they just like spit it out. Um, or else it it will re render this. So uh, one of the things obviously that's wrong with this is it's exiting right here instead of returning a response. So you can't do anything after the response with it. Um, I, I think there's, uh, there's some better ways to do this in Slim. Um, I think you can uh, manually like shove a string in the response body, uh, which might let you edit it after. This is just the way I found on the internet. Uh, typical MVC controller might look like this, right? You do the, the get view or the, uh, this, this, is from, uh, this is from Laravel. This happens to be from Laravel, but it's, it's really very similar in any other framework. So you load the post you know, by slug. You check if it exists. You re return if it's not. I didn't do any kind of ACL check, so these comparisons may not be like apples to apples, obviously. Then you return your, I didn't do a JSON here either. It would have been too long. But um, so, uh, but the, so the problem with uh, most of these like MVC uh, frameworks is that you still have to load this post object in every uh, in every action that needs it. So when you're viewing it, when you're editing it, when you're uh, deleting it, um, so you're gonna have to you're gonna have this repetitive code in your in your controller. There's no shared uh, there's no shared context really that you can do this. Uh, there's a couple ways around this in MVC frameworks, but they're really more framework knowledge of how to get around this problem rather than PHP knowledge because there's no PHP way to really get around this problem. Calling a separate function is going to call that. Um, the most you could do is maybe create a helper function to do that, but then you've got to call that helper function everywhere. So you're still going to have some level of repetitive code in a lot of places. So the bullet closure context lets you just load it once, and then I'm going to use it in a get. I'm going to use it in a delete. I'm just going to use it. So that's that's really the key. That's really why, um, why specifically bullets routing parses only one segment at a time and why it uses closures and why it's tested. It's really going to help you out more than uh, it might seem like it immediately would. Um, I was a little worried. I'm going to back up a little bit. I show, I show this. I say, I say less code is a virtue, right? And then I show this and then I'm like, Oh, by the way, Slim is only this much code, <laughs> right? But, uh, but what you get for that is um, less, <coughs> less repetitious code, right? And repetition leads to mistakes. <coughs> and, you get, and you get more here with these handlers that, that I'll go through here in a minute. So bullet route handlers. So we've seen the path handler. Uh, the path handler has, a, it has an alias called resource. If you'd, rather, uh, if you'd rather start with resource, it's a little more restful. Uh, naming does the same thing. There's just a static string path that's going to get matched. Um, you can also do an array. So uh, if you have, uh, this is really common for index, uh, for index paths. You can do like slash and index. So if someone goes to your page and goes slash index.html or index.json or something, uh, it'll, it'll get to it. So you can do an array as well. Um, the path handler will return a 404 file not found if it can't find the path that you've defined. It can be as nested as deeply as you want um, to build the route however you want. So you can do like admin, articles, three comments, whatever. Whatever you want, it's really not limited. The param handler uh, will match a parameter in the route by uh, some kind of, of test rule. So, so there's some kind of test function and then callback. Uh, there's a couple built-in test functions. Int, float, boolean, slug um, are all built-in test. uh, tests, and you just use the string. If you want to use your custom, you just register param type, uh, whatever function, alpha num, and then you do a, do a test function, which is just going to return boolean true or false. If it returns false, it's not going to be matched. It will not execute this closure. Don't have to worry about any of that code running. If it is matched, it'll execute the closure and move to the next path level. You can also return a value, a scalar value. Yeah, I've got it here, actually. 
So it returns true or scalar value. If you return a scalar value, the scalar value is going to be is going to be passed in. Let's see. No, nope, I'm going forward. Let me go back. The scalar value is going to be passed in here. So whatever you your your test returns. So you can actually mutate the uh, the path. You can change it to whatever if you want to steer to lower it or whatever. Um, whatever you want to do before it gets there. Ball skips the route. Then we get to method handlers. So we got path, in, uh, path param, and method handlers. Method handlers are just like they sound. Get, post, put, delete. Or you can do method and then whatever HTTP method you want to use there. Like post, it does the same thing as this post. Um, it handles a post to that route. So this would handle a post to slash articles. The neat thing about these handlers is uh, remember how I was saying that, H, uh, that bullet conforms to the HTTP spec by default. This, if you use these method handlers, this will actually return a 405 method not allowed if it can't find the method. Because since you're defining the methods and bullet parses only one path at a time, it's going to go in here. It will have executed this closure because it's saying, oh, I got articles, check, execute the closure. And it says, I see you've defined a get, a post, and a delete, but I got a put. What am I going to do with that? Well, these are method handlers, so I know that you've, you've requested the right route, the right path, but you haven't requested the right method. And the proper response for that, according to the HTTP spec, is a 406 method not allowed. So you're going to get, or 405 method not allowed, excuse me. So you're going to get 405 method not allowed. Format handlers are similar. So we get to articles. We do a get request on articles. We're specifying, I can respond to this, uh, to this parameter, or, or I can respond to this path with a get request in these formats. So you're, you're giving bullets some intelligence here. So it's, it's kind of saying, OK, so on this path, I know that I can respond to this method. And I know that I can respond in these formats. And then if you request something that's not supported, like XML or CSV or something, something else, it will say 406 not acceptable. That's not an acceptable format. You're going to have to give me something else. So it will do all of the uh, content negotiation, all the accept header parsing for you. Um, comes built in. HTTP spec by default. Yeah. Um, sorry if you're getting this, but uh, in content negotiations, the client can request multiple. Yes. Display them. Does bullets. First one. It takes the first one. First one wins. Okay. Yeah. It's in. It's because you're. Uh, if you send an. If you send an accept header, you should send uh, in order of preference. Okay. Uh, and there's there's some weighting that can be in there, but um, yeah, it's it's the first one that that's match basically. And that's the first one the client accepts, not the first one you put into the order of your code. The client would send an accept header with like, I can accept text HTML or text XML or application JSON, and it would see the text HTML first and it would match that and return the HTML. Cool. So. Um, there's other handlers. There's a domain handler and a, a subdomain handler. These can be useful if you are. These can be useful for a lot of things. Uh, if you're doing multi-site, obviously the domain uh, is pretty cool. So you need a multi-site uh, application and a single code base. The subdomain handler is also pretty cool. Um, I've got uh, an app that uh, that I'm that I'm making that has a uh, an API and a uh, a marketing site. You know, like so if you go to like www or if you don't type a subdomain, by the way, you can put false in here or null, and if it doesn't have a subdomain, if it's just a bare, bare domain, or a naked domain, you know, it'll, it'll uh, call that with a subdomain false or null. Um, remember, you can do an array also. So what I do to handle like a marketing site is I would put in here, I would put in an array of false and www. So either one. Um, usually use DNS to like handle a redirect to www or no www, but you can do it. You know, you can respond to both if you want to. Um, so what you would do is, in, in these routes, remember going back to our, our index uh, example, 
we required all those routes in. So we split them out into their own files with some structure, and we required all of them in. So what you would do is you would define in your index file, you would just say, hey, subdomain API require these routes. Subdomain www or false or, you know, or whatever require these files. And then, bam, you've got, you've got a site, a single code base that is both your marketing site and your, and your, main, uh, you know, your main application, whatever it is. Uh, there's a bunch of other applications there, too. Can that's, sub, yeah. Can that subdomain also have an array for multiple yes, subdomains? Yeah. Yes, yeah, all of these routes can have an, have a, have an array. Yeah, because internally what it's doing, even if you send it a string internally, it's casting it to an array and then looping over it. So if you send it an array, it's just, I mean, it knows how to handle it on every single one of these routes. Um, the only one that it actually, that's a lie, the only, the only one that it doesn't is the method handlers. Because you, you, you shouldn't respond to a, Put, yeah, yeah, same different, uh, different methods. Um, the return type. So I said uh, bullet requires an explicit return uh, instead of just echoing out like blah, you know, like I hate that. That's what I think of. I think of like throwing up, like oh blah, here's all my content, you know. Um, because if you have any events on that, like something that runs after each request, you can't do anything with this string. Like, what do you do? You can't change the you, you can't do it as gracefully. You can probably do something, but not as gracefully. You can't handle it as gracefully. So you return a string. Um, everything that you return is going to get wrapped up into a response object. So if you call a route, you're always going to get a response object, no matter what you return. So you can return a string. It'll wrap it in a response object with a 200 OK and just spit out your string. Um, if you want to use your own templating engine, a lot of people end up doing this, and they do like Twig or something. In the in the response, they'll just do like app response like 200, and then render render the Twig template or something, uh, whatever you want to use. Uh, you can send integers, uh, and it'll send the HTTP status code that you use. So instead of like if if uh, post is false, like if I can't load the post, throw new HTTP file not found exception. Sorry, I can't find your post, dude. Uh, I'm really sorry. Instead of having to do that everywhere, you can just do return 404. And then you can put an event handler on 404 that will handle all those, all those 404 events. So you can return integers. Boolean false is just 404 error. So you just return false, 404 error, a little shortcut. Arrays, I already went over this. They can auto JSON encode plus send the appropriate headers. Everything's a bullet response instance. You can also add custom objects uh, with custom response handlers. And the way internally that Bullet implements the array is it actually registers a uh, response handler for arrays that runs it through JSON encode uh, internally. So building the, way, building the URL you want should be easy. This is, again, like not the whole not fighting the framework thing. Um, up to, let's see. Uh, most modern frameworks, this is not as much of a problem as it used to be, but it still kind of is a problem in some, some cases. Uh, so I like to split my routes, so you see that here. If you want to add an admin path before all your routes, like how do you do that in Code Igniter? <laughs> how do you version your API? What if you want like a V1 right there? Like V1 API, like what do you do? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's rude, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, uh, make a subdomain and run a, a new coding application. I don't know. Um, in some more modern frameworks, uh, Laravel has like a group um, thing that you can like prefix the route with. But they, the problem is they call them different things, right? So again, this kind of goes into the PHP knowledge or framework knowledge kind of thing. Um, so bullet, you can, you can just you're like oh like. I know how that works. That's a closure. Bullet sees this. It parts is that. And I'm just going to nest that in another path. Like, that's simple to solve. It's, there's no, like, how do I solve that? Oh my gosh, banging my head against the wall. This framework's not cooperating with me. Um, so a lot of frameworks um, nowadays can solve this problem uh, for this simple case, for just adding, like, a single path. Um, they call it different things, though. So it depends on your framework. They call it like route prefix, or uh, I've seen route namespace, or um, things like that. So, uh, but this is so much easier with Bullet, and you already know how to do it if you if you get the gist of the framework, right? 
So URLs. Um, URLs are interesting. This is this kind of brings up uh, another case I want to show. Um, a common scenario is like nesting um, a route inside another route. So for example, if you have a comments route that you kind of want to use polymorphically, and that means just you want the comments to be able to be applied to multiple different types of things. So I want articles with comments. I want events with comments. I want um, blog posts with comments. I want users to have comments. You know, anything you want to put comments on, right? So like comments and ratings are ones that can typically be applied polymorphically fairly easily. Um, what you can do if you split your routes, you can actually just require comments PHP inside your posts slash integers. So you go like post slash 42 and then you get comments and then comments slash edit and it's just, you know, you can, uh, your routes are composable, like totally composable, build them any way you want, uh, it just works. Like, well it just keeps going until, until it solves the full route. So if you request post slash 42 slash comments and it sees that you've, you know, acquired comments inside post slash 42, the route that's going to handle it is going to handle that, it'll just keep parsing it down. It doesn't know that like this is supposed to be a root path. There's no reason for it to know that. It just, it's where you define it. So totally, completely composable routes. So um, I added this URL, URL helper. A lot of frameworks have URL helpers because they have like named routes. So you do like route name and then controller equals log and action equals view and uh, param equals like ID or something. Um, this is a micro framework, so really we're, we're just gonna do like slash post slash 42 or whatever. We're probably just gonna do it like that most of the time. There's really no route names in bullet. Uh, it's a micro framework. So one thing I added though, if you do compose your routes like this, like putting comments accessible from the root and nesting it inside some other thing, you can put a dot before the beginning slash of your, of your route, of your path. And bullet will know if, if I am not inside a route that that is root URL. And kind of like the file system, you know, like dot, like starting here, route. It starts where it knows it is, route. So if you've included this inside post or events, it just, it's happy to just go on. And uh, it's really, really nice. So you don't have to, you don't have to conditionally make this nasty if statement, like if inside post do slash post slash ID slash comments or whatever nasty stuff. Again, a little more intelligence, does more for you. Uh, I think it's just a better situation. Uh, to begin with. So, so I said I had a recommended setup uh, with Bullet. Give it a little more organization. Give it a little more. Um, give it a little more structure. Um, not uh, the closures naturally give it structure and context. But as far as the file system goes, um, this is kind of what I recommend for the file system. So I have a basically. I usually have an app, a test, and a web directory, and they kind of are what they say they are. Right, the app holds all my. Uh, route files and all my logic for the application. The test is for, uh, uh, you know, obviously unit test. Bullet, by the way, is very testable. All you have to do, you do app run and then like request method and URL. And then you get a response object back always, right? Like I said, you always, it always wraps whatever in a response object. And then you can do assertions right off the response object. So you do app get, uh, app run, like get slash test slash uh, post or whatever, and it runs that, turns your response object, and then it'll be like 404 not found or you know, whatever the template contents was or whatever. So very testable, very easy, uh, and it's very <laughs> thoroughly unit tested. Uh, uh, it probably has more route. It has, probably has more tests than actual code uh, in the. Uh, if you look at the repo. Um, anyway, so the vendor is just composer, right? So that's going to just here if, when you do exposure install. Um, and then your route. So I put everything in app routes and uh, app SRC, I've, uh, I typically wire up to the, um, in the composer.json file to the uh, PSR0 auto loaded. So 
So if you use any libraries, uh, if you create any libraries specific to the app that are not like composer packages that you pull in, they'll be all auto loaded from that directory. And then, and then you know, all that feedback or something. Make sure it's not me. All right. Um, so this is kind of the recommended setup. It's on the website, Bullet PHP Docs uh, organization. So easy to find on the website. The last thing really is event. Is event one? Well, like the second last thing. Um, but it's events. There's a global before and after event. So if you have an app that's like totally locked down, needs authentication before doing anything, you can just use the global before event. Get uh, get, get run for anything. Um, and then there's dynamic events. So depending on what is returned, Bullet will fire these events. So Bullet will fire an event uh, every time, whatever status code was returned. So if you have an event that's listening on the status code, that's going to get fired every time that status code gets returned. Uh, the response format's the same thing. Uh, the exception class. Is, uh, uh, is a custom one. So if there's an exception thrown inside one of your routes, Bullet will catch it and then run it through an event. And you can create an event uh, for whatever the exception class is that you're, you kind of want to respond to. Or you can just do a generic exception to respond to all exceptions. And that's useful if you do exception logging through like a service like Sentry or get exceptional or something, uh, stuff like that. So here's kind of a quick example. Uh, just on app on four four, and you can do off like four four, just like JavaScript events. Sorry about that static. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't think same thing you're doing. Maybe not. It might be some loose cable. But um, uh, the only the only different thing about events is events happen. Um, they're kind of they're not uh, they're not a route handler, right? So. You have a request and a response sent. So if you want to change the response content, you have to just shove it in the response content. So you, you don't do the normal like route handlers because this is an event that, that you're responding to. It's not in a route. So that's really the only difference there. This is an example of an exception route. And, and see, like instead of being able to do the, re the format handler, you know, I have to do this because, again, it's an event, not a path that it's responding to. So I do a JSON, you know. Um, uh, do JSON if it's JSON, else I do HTML for a nice uh, stack trace. And then I do, <laughs> if it's not in production, if it's not in production, I'll do the full stack trace and file online. So if it's on a dev machine, I get, if I do a JSON request, I get that data back. Um, nested sub requests are something Bullet can do. And this is why I said uh, running tests is pretty easy, because all you do is you do app, run, and then method, and then URL. And that's it, because that's all that's all Bullet does it, um, internally when it sees a request. So if you define a path called foo here, and you just return string foo, and you call this define a path bar, and then you're requesting the bar path. So it's going to hit this, and then you're requesting get foo inside here. So it's going to go up here and grab foo. Remember, this is a Bullet response now. It's not a string. So we're going to do response content and then bar. And we'll get foobar out. So um, you could do nested kind of HMBC style requests. Super easy, really straightforward as well. Um, if you want to get started with Bullet, um, these are kind of the resources that I have. Uh, Bullet PHP is the main site. Uh, the GitHub repo is on my username, github.com slash vlocus slash bullet PHP. And then the skeleton app um, is also on my GitHub. And the, the blog example is also on my GitHub. So the blog example might help uh, if you have any more specific questions of like how to, uh, you know, how to put something together specifically. It's, it's a, it has, a, it has a, a little ORM with it and some other stuff that may be useful to look at. Um, but Bullet doesn't come with an ORM. So that's composer package. You, know, you can pick whatever you want. Um, did, I did this if we have time, um, kind of, kind of almost at time right now, but um, but I'll go over these really quickly. So um, some MVC frameworks kind of have anti-patterns. This is a big one. This is a big pet peeve of mine. 
like rest controller versus base controller. Like, what are you talking about? I'm writing in PHP. That means I'm writing for the web. That means it should be what? It should be RESTful by default. HTTP is RESTful. Like, that's what the spec says. Why do I have to freaking choose a REST controller to get a default behavior? So this is a huge pet peeve of mine. Uh, big anti-pattern in MVC frameworks. You should not have to choose REST. Like, if you're writing in PHP, what are you writing for? Like, if you're writing for the web, right? That's what PHP does. Uh, so I. I don't know why they do that, but um, another anti-pattern is like you just can't use basic PHP knowledge to change the flow of your application. So some quick examples are like uh, you might see some frameworks like this. Like there's just no way, uh, even if you have a controller and you want to call another method inside the same controller, you can't use PHP to do that because the, the framework will just like ah, what are you talking about? Like I don't have the context. Like what are you doing? So you have to use like a forward function to forward to the <laughs> You know, it's the same action inside the same controller. So your PHP knowledge will betray you in this case and cause you errors, cause you grief, which shouldn't, shouldn't be the case. And I apologize, this is a concatenation. This should be like a comma. I don't know why that happened or how that happened. <laughs> um, before filter, so, um, so in bullet with the, the nested routing, if you want to do anything before you hit the route, you just <laughs> do it before it hits the route, right? It's PHP, like it leverages raw PHP. So uh, frameworks, of course, can't do that. They have to go through this whole request flow. Um, they end up with these filters, before filter, after filters. It's the way they have to do things. Um, it's kind of a, a, a symptom of, you know, of MVC maybe not really being the perfect architecture for what you're trying to do. Um, it's my opinion, of course. <laughs> So, uh, and then you, you can do things like, you know, before off on every action except this one. Um, and what it does is, especially for newcomers coming to the framework, like trying to read through the code, they're like, I don't understand why this is hitting off. Like, why can't I just call this route? I'm getting, a, um, I'm getting redirected to the login page every time. Like, what's going on? And then you're like, it's a filter, like check the filters, duh, you know, idiot, novice programmer that doesn't know the framework yet. Like, um, and then you gotta check, the, and you gotta kind of figure out what's going on. So there's a lot of like reading in between the lines. Like you can't just read the code and know what's going on. Um, that's kind of a thing. Um, this is less of a problem, as I was kind of saying um, later with routing, but inflexible routing used to be a huge problem with MVC frameworks. And MVC frameworks have come a long way since then to have a little bit more flexible routing. Still not as flexible as what you're going to get uh, with something like Bullet that's just completely composable. But uh, controller like action ID, <laughs> like I don't know how many times you've seen like events slash view slash ID instead of just events slash ID. Uh, most modern frameworks, like I said, are a lot better at this. They'll let you kind of do more, but used to be a bigger problem than it is now. Um, <laughs> This, this I hate seeing. I hate seeing constants defined for, uh, for HTTP status codes. Like, if you're a web developer, you're thinking, uh, if you're building for HTTP, you're like, this is a 404 error. Like, I know 404. Like, I know that. 201 is created, right? What you should return after a post request to tell the client that you've created the resource they, they posted to you. You're like, I know. But then you have to go, <laughs> but then you're like, no, I can't just use 201. What's that constant? Oh, did, was it like HTTP, like, uh, was it like status created or like, what was it? And then you gotta go look in the docs and like, it's just, it's, re it's just retarded. Uh, just, you know, just return the method. This is my favorite. This is from Zen Framework 2. <laughs> I <laughs> thought about submitting this to the daily WTF, by the way, because, <laughs> uh, Integers are apparently unsafe and you shouldn't use them. So uh, you never know what those integers are going to do. So always use those constants, guys. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a lot, this is a controversial one. This is one, obviously, my opinion, but I think using classes for controllers, um, that may be a possible, uh, 
anti-fat. It may be the reason why they framework to do a lot of this stuff. Because if you think about what a class is and, wh <laughs> and what a controller is, uh, a class is a blueprint for creating an object. How many people here in their framework can go new index controller and pass in dependencies? Like, oh, oh, no, yeah, maybe, maybe. Some modern frameworks are starting to do this, right? Finally. So Zen Framework 2 can do this. Um, Laravel, their IOC container, um, can do this now, finally. Um, you can pass in dependencies to your controller. But it's still going to extend, you know, extend a bunch of other stuff, which is going gonna, gonna to bring in a bunch of other stuff as well. So um, it's, uh, and you can't, you, you get this scope of the object, but you can't really use it like an object. It's kind of a class because it has to be for structure, and uh, they're convenient for auto loading, right? It's, it's really easy to auto load a class. You can just say new whatever, and it's it's auto loaded. Um, but you can't really use any of the. OOP concepts. It's not really a blueprint to create that object. So um, I'm kind of over time now, but 